Happy Preschool Tuesday! Hi everybody, it's Mr. Kevin here. I hope you're all doing well. The last time we got together, we talked about how we take an exhibit down. Well, today I wanted to talk about how we put an exhibit up. What happens when we put an exhibit together? How do we decide what artworks are going to go into a room? How are we going to arrange them? What is it going to look like when it's all done? We're going to play with that and see what we can find out by looking at our fall collection of American Indian art. Come with me! We have a lot of objects from Native American cultures all across North America, not just here in New York where our museum is. And so when we were putting this together, we wanted to find out what's the easiest way for people to understand these objects and these cultures when they walk through the gallery. And because we had so many pieces from so many different places, we decided the best way was to do it geographically. And geographically means we do it by place. What's this called? That's right, this is called a map. And this map is how we arrange our gallery. Every single part of our gallery is a different part of North America. So it's almost like you're putting on your hiking boots and you're walking across the entire continent when you come to this exhibit and see all of these objects. Wow, look at all of these cool masks that we have up here on the wall. And what do we have down here? Well, we have weapons, some knives and some daggers. And you can see the way we arrange this is we put all of the masks where? That's right, on the wall. So they're way up high, and you can see the front of the mask, almost like somebody's wearing it. And then we took all of the weapons and put them down here, next to each other. And these ways that we arrange the objects on the wall help people to look at each piece and understand what it was used for and compare them to each other. So these are all examples of pottery. And pottery is made out of what? That's right, clay. These are all from the desert southwest and they're from many different cultures who live there. And they're also a lot of different ages. Some of these bowls are less than a hundred years old. Some of these bowls are over a thousand years old. And when we put them together like this, you can compare them. You can compare the designs on the bowls. You can see that some are really big, some are much smaller, they're different colors. And so you can look at them and see how different cultures at different times made their clay bowls here in the desert southwest. We like to find a lot of ways to show our objects here at the museum. So here in the Great Hall, we've arranged some of our Native American objects, not by geography, but by design, by the shapes, lines, and colors found on the objects. And so here, let's take a look at some examples of some shapes. What shape do you see in the middle of this shirt? That's right, it's a circle made entirely out of porcupine quills. And over here, what shape do you see? That's right, a zigzag that kind of looks like a lightning bolt. Over here, we've arranged objects by color. So we have brightly colored objects like this weaving on the wall. And then down here, another brightly colored object, a sash made from glass beads. Thousands and thousands of colorful little glass beads with some red, yellow, and blue tassels at the bottom. Over here, we have a clay bowl made from earth colors, like white and black and red. And over here is a wooden box, a bent corner chest, with some faces carved in the front, and it's been painted red. Speaking of red, look at this bright color up here on this blanket, which has these cool handprint shapes on it. Speaking of shapes, let's take a look at some of these objects over here that have some nice bold shapes in them. F starting with this print from the Arctic, which shows a man hunting a whale and a bear. And then down here, we've got this really cool boat with more of those cool designs from the Northwest coast with those oval shape eyes. Very, very cool, those animals in the design there. And then over here, here's some more zigzags in this huge woven basket that has little people on it as well. 
And up here we have some little figures too. What do you see there? That's right, lots and lots of horses. And here we have a drum with lots of birds painted on one side. It's yellow, blue, and red with some lightning bolts on it. And then on the other side, we've got stars with a big star right in the middle. This is all painted on animal hide that's pulled very tightly, so that drum makes a great noise. We have another room in our museum where we arrange objects from our thought collection in a different way, by material. This is our study center, and here in these glass cases, our objects are arranged by the type of material they're made from. Clay bowls are in one space, metal objects, things made from wood, things with glass beads on them, each get their own place in this room. This room is kind of like a cabinet full of curiosities, which is interesting because that's how museums started out. Hundreds of years ago, before there were museums, wealthy people would keep their collections in their homes to show them off, and they would call these collections cabinets of curiosities. These were rooms or cabinets which would house all kinds of cool objects, from rocks and minerals, to carvings and artworks, even stuffed animals from around the world. And they would bring their friends over and show them their cabinets of curiosity and talk about all of the cool objects that they've collected. Do you collect anything at home? What do you collect? Some kids collect shells or rocks or marbles. Maybe you have a little rubber ducky collection. Who knows? But there's all sorts of different ways that you can show off your collection. Maybe you even have a little cabinet of curiosities at your home. Do your parents keep anything very valuable or breakable in a special case like we do at my house? That's also a cabinet of curiosities, and it's kind of like a little museum if you think about it. Speaking of rubber duckies, my daughter Lori collects them from Fly Creek Cider Mill. Here's just a few of them. And let's find a way to show these off like a little cabinet of curiosity. We are going to use an egg carton that we've cut in half, and every little pocket of our egg carton is going to become a space for one of our duckies. Now, it doesn't have to be duckies. It could be My Little Ponies. It could be Hot Wheels cars, whatever you'd like. But what you have to do is decide how you're going to organize them. How do you want to show off your collections? Maybe you sort them by color. Maybe you sort them by size. Maybe you sort them by the, the types of vehicles they are. There's a whole bunch of different ways to sort them, just like we do with our thought collection. And here, we've made a little bit of a shelf. All you have to do is take one side of that egg carton, trim off the little lip that's there, and now it'll stand up on its end. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make labels for these, just like we have at the museum. Every object in our museum has a title and the name of the artist who made it and when it was made. Here, I'm not gonna get that fancy, but I am going to have two labels here, one for my yellow duckies in one of my cabinets of curiosity and one for my painted duckies in my other cabinet. So that it's like a little museum display right here on your countertop. But let's do something else that's a little bit fun here too. We are gonna take a large sewing needle, and this is something that you have your parents do, and some yarn, and we are gonna thread that needle through the tops of our egg cartons. So we're gonna thread it through the first one, and then we're gonna thread it through the second one, and we are going to create a little traveling exhibit. There was a one time a long time ago in Norwich, New York, where there was a train that came to town that had a gallery inside that showed artwork from Native Americans. It was the coolest thing. We went inside, we looked around, and then the train went off to another town. So here is our little traveling exhibit. And our duckies in there, yellow duckies in one car, and then our painted duckies in another. And let's go, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another Preschool Tuesday. We hope you had fun. Next week, join Michelle for a special presentation from the Farmer's Museum. And in two weeks, I'll be back with a special program all about love and friendship, just in time for Valentine's Day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.